everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Uh, it's been a long day and I'm not done yet. But I did want to drop in on you and sort of kind of talk about something that's on my mind. We've been doing these series and I've sort of kind of hung out in this uh, generational trauma thing for a while. I kind of stopped and thought about what direction I want to take. So I'm going to start putting some things out of my book, Born in Captivity, to talk to you about. But before I do, I need to remind you that we are in the midst of a fundraiser. We are asking and challenging you to support the work we do. If you believe in the work we do, uh, show some love, show some support. Uh, it's so easy to hear this and say, okay, and pass the buck on down uh, mentally. Somebody will give, somebody will support. What we need you to do is we need you to support. If you're hearing it, I'm talking to you. Support it. Don't pass it to someone else. Don't uh, uh, postulate or assume someone else is going to come in and support. We need to learn how to be unified in our support, codified in our support. I watch these people, and I'm talking about them, get on code at the drop of a dime. Nobody has to tell them to do it. Nobody has to beg them to do it. They get on code and they're on top. So we definitely need to be on code. So again, I'm challenging you to support the work we're doing. We are still going strong. We're still doing so much. So I, I'm excited about where we're going, uh, but I am challenged and pushed to call some things as they are. I'm not one for sugarcoating things, but I'm also not one to be brutal for the sake of being brutal or disrespectful. I believe you love on people no matter where they are, but you hold them accountable and you're truthful with them. Uh, I hope that the people who love me are that way with me, that they are not co-signing BS when I need them to be brutally honest, not nasty, but direct. Uh, and so when I started studying generational trauma, that's this thing, you know, you hear it all the time, hurt people hurt people. The first thing that we need to understand when we hear hurt people hurt people, it's a warning. It's not permission. What do I mean by that? I mean that it's telling you that if somebody's been through some things, if they haven't taken the time to heal, there's a good chance they will unintentionally hurt somebody around them as a defense mechanism because they have not yet healed. It is not permission for people who have been hurt to just go out and feel like they can hurt people and be mean to people and take advantage of people because it happened to them. So that's the first thing. But the, there's some truth in this. It's uh, when a person has been broken or traumatized, when a person has been harmed, when a person has lost trust in a certain area of their life on the way that's supposed to go, they will behave differently than someone who is whole in that area. And in behaving differently, they will create defense mechanisms that will often seem offensive. They will get angry quick. They will strike out quick. They will be verbally abusive. Uh, and, and on down the line, there are all different ways that they can have certain uh, infractions that can be harmful and hurtful to other people. Now, the thing is, we know where a great deal of our trauma comes from. That's obvious. Here's the problem I have. At what point are we going to take ownership in our own lives? Because here's what happens when I work with a client at, on an individual basis or when I'm doing group sessions or when I'm in a large speaking audience and I'm challenging people to change. It's the same. But when I'm working with an individual, my thing is the first thing I have to get them to do is ch reshape their framing change their thinking. You cannot change realities. You cannot change outcomes. You cannot change uh, what's going wrong in your life thinking the same way. I believe it was Albert Einstein that says you cannot 
uh, fix a problem with the same thinking that created it. Now, we may not be responsible for the thinking, but we are the ones who have, through generations, taken this thought process, this way of thinking, this way of viewing things, and created a perpetual cycle of suffering, of poverty, uh, of ineffective, of political impotence, and so much more that we have in uh, an indirect way become compliant with the racist white racial caste system. And we're compliant in our docility, we're compliant in our participation, we are compliant in our seeking to be accepted, we are compliant in the way that we mistreat and mishandle one another and in the way we refuse to support one another. That is a complete that, that is a form of compliance into the system. That's what the system is designed to make you want to do. So you are literally cooperating with the very system that you're complaining about. And one of the things that is really frustrating me is we're doing a very poor job of protecting our children. We send them to schools that that immediately immediately starts to alienate them and to break down what we're trying to instill in them and to present to them a narrative that is not uh, pro-developmental for them. And then we wonder why things are the way they are. It's because we are not doing a good enough job in protecting our children. And so my challenge is going to be unmistakably that we've got to do a better job of how we socialize our children. We've got to do a better job of how we lead and teach our children. We've got to do a better job of holistically educating our children. We have to insulate them. Also, some of, another way we are failing our children is in the refusal and the ineptness in building generational wealth. The wealth gap is widening, widening. And we can find and quote all the ways that they are working to stop us and to inhibit us from building wealth but what we're not doing is talking about why we're not taking advantages of the mechanisms and the opportunities that are out there for us to uh, circumvent some of those uh, mechanisms and schemes that they have in front of us it's our responsibility it's absolutely our responsibility to come to a place where we are actively engaged in changing our situation it's not their responsibility to change it you can say moral responsibility. You can say that they owe us because of what's happened. But what you got to understand is in the grand scope of things in society, on any level, any species, the grand, the grand scheme is to survive. So survival of the species. They see themselves as a subspecies. They see themselves as different. They have set up structures and caste systems that identify them as being different for the purpose of survival. They've excluded us from that as being a part of their human social subculture. We have to understand that that's how they're operating. We have to be able to understand that no amount of moral uh, reasoning is going to change that because that's their mechanism of survival. Then we must, in and of ourselves, develop our own mechanism of survival. We must come together. We must unify. We must defend one another. We must t hold and take care of one another. We must teach one another. Uh, there has to be a collective responsibility to the total if we're ever expected to do anything because individually anything we do can at any time be interrupted by the system if the system decides to do so because there's not a strong enough force. I don't care how rich you are. Look at Kanye. When they decided to break him, they went after him and they, they broke him. Uh, now, obviously, he's creative. He's doing some things. We understand he's on the rebound, and a lot of that stuff is coming back to him. But for a moment, he was totally isolated because he had alienated himself, whether you agree with him or not, from blacks with the whole slavery is a choice thing. And some other things he was doing, you know, the whole Kardashian thing to me. But, hey, it is what it is. Each person their own. Uh, in that sense, I'm going to hold my views and I'm going to speak my truth based on what I've spent years trying to understand and the importance of connecting and loving on our own. But hey, anyway, the point was somebody that's classified as a billionaire could be quickly relieved of a great portion of that wealth within days. 
And that's because so much of the avenues and means to that wealth was controlled by what? People who are part of the other caste system. So then that tells us if we're really truly going to be strong, we have to create and sustain our own system so that no one on the outside can determine how well we do within the system. These are some things that we're going to have to really truly examine. We're going to have to really truly examine how we are actually traumatizing our kids by sending them out into a world where they're not prepared, a world where they're not economically prepared. Uh, prepared, where they're not socially prepared, where they're still struggling with an identity crisis, and they are being told who they are, what they are, what they are not, by those who don't have their interest at heart. It's our responsibility, and we're doing an immensely poor job at it right now. Well, that's where I want to leave it at right now, but I had to touch on that. So I'm going to jump out of here and go do what I got to do, but I, I had to deal with that. So again it's time to put in work it's time to change it's time to unify it's time uh, to be about something other than just yapping and talking and complaining and whining it's time to make some things happen on that note I'm going to get ready to get out of here as I said at the beginning of this video we need your support look in the description box and show some love on that note I'm out of here you guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day. Peace.